create a new folder and call it Mapping for Enemy Territory. Go to splashdamage.com and download the game. You probably already have this game installed on your computer, but this will be a new and clean install, only for testing the maps that you create. Don't worry, you can have multiple installations of the game Enemy Territory on your computer. It's a relatively small game, so it doesn't take much space. Install it into your new folder, Mapping for Enemy Territory. Inside this folder, you will find the Enemy Territory game executable. Further, inside the ET main folder, later when installing level editors, more files will automatically be added here in ET main. I will also manually create a folder, but more about that later. Next, let's start the game. Double click the ET executable to make sure that the game works. It's a pretty old game, so there might be some initial problems for you getting it to work on your computer. If you're having problems with the game, head over to the discussion forum on splashdamage.com or go to Reddit. There's a subreddit for enemy territory. Okay, now we have installed the actual game into our mapping folder. Before we continue, I want to increase the accessibility of some critical game assets. Inside the ET main folder, there's a large file entitled pack0.pk3. It contains most of the assets for the game. For example, scripts, audio files, etc. Mainly etc. So I copy it. Inside Mapping for Enemy Territory, I create a folder, Pack0 Unzipped. There I paste it, change the file extension to zip and unzip it. As you know, PK3 files are just zip files. Let's take a quick look inside. For mapping, the most important folders are level shots, maps, models, scripts, sounds, and textures. Let's take a look inside sounds and the subfolder world. Let's scroll down and listen to the classic sound file war. Another classic is dog. In summary, so far, we've installed the game and made most of the game files accessible. As a mapper, it's sometimes necessary to look at or listen to these original files while mapping. It's time to install the level editor NetRadiant Custom. Just Google for NetRadiant Custom Download. It's over here on GitHub, under the heading Releases. And the heading Assets. Unzip it. You can rename the folder to My Net Radiant. Go inside the folder, then inside the folder Net Radiant Custom. Find the Radiant executable file. Double click it to start the editor. Select Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. Next, the editor needs to know the location of the enemy territory game executable on your computer. Go to the new folder, Mapping for Enemy Territory, and then inside the folder, Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. The ET executable file is located here. Click OK. Now the editor will know where to find the actual game and all the necessary game files to run correctly. We're inside the level editor NetRadiant Custom. 
Let's pause for a moment and go back to the folders. Inside the game installation and the ET main folder, we can see that a couple of files have been automatically added, which is normal. Each time the level editor starts, it will take a quick look at the files inside this ET main folder. And that's why we had to tell the editor where the game is installed on your computer. Now back to the editor. Double click on the textures to make sure that they work. Most of them work properly. However, double click on common. Warning signs indicate missing textures, such as the vital clip textures, the cork texture, and other textures that are often used when mapping. We need to fix this. And the best way to acquire these additional files is by installing another level editor, GTK Radiant. Thanks to SCSI for helping me solve this problem. Google for GTK Radiant download. The website is iculus.org. Download the file GTK Radiant into the folder Mapping for Enemy Territory and unzip it. You can rename this folder to My GTK Radiant. Go into the folder and locate the Radiant executable. Double click it to launch GTK Radiant. In the window, select the game Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. Then click that small button with the three dots and locate the game file i.e. the ET executable file, just like we did earlier. Start the editor on this game. Now we're inside the level editor GTK Radiant. It looks just like Net Radiant Custom, and that's because GTK Radiant is the original editor. Net Radiant Custom is developed from GTK Radiant. You can use either GTK Radiant or Net Radiant Custom when you map for enemy territory or other games, such as Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Now close this editor. We just wanted to install it. That was it. Let's go inside the Wolfenstein Enemy Territory folder and then the ET Main folder. As you can see, a couple of new files have been installed. For example, common PK3. These files were automatically created when GTK Radiant was installed. Restart Net Radiant Custom. Now check the textures under the heading Common. They are now working correctly. We can see the cork texture, the clip texture, and so on. Next, create a new folder inside Mapping for Enemy Territory. Let's call it My Custom Maps. In plural, because I hope you make more than one map. Inside it, Create a new folder with the name of your upcoming map. Let's call it Dynamite Allied Tower underscore version 1. Inside that folder, you create these subfolders. Level shots, maps, models, scripts, sound, textures. Inside level shots, create and put a 512 by 512 pixels image with the words Dynamite Allied Tower version 1. Its file name must be the same as the map. Still inside level shots. Create and put a gray 1024 by 1024 pixels image. Its file name must be Dynamite Allied Towers underscore version 1 underscore CC. I strongly recommend Notepad++. Google for Notepad++ download. It's over at notepad++.org. Now create a simple text file with the following text. Save it inside the folder Maps. 
under the same name as the map and change the file extension from .txt to .script. Inside models, create two subfolders, map objects and multiplayer. Inside the folder scripts, create two simple text files. The first one should be named dynamite allied tower underscore version one dot arena. Write this text. The second one should be named dynamite allied tower underscore version one dot shader. In this text file, write the following text. A shader file is simply telling the level editor and the game engine that these are images and this is the way we want them to be treated. Shaders aren't absolutely necessary. You can use plain images such as JPEGs without a shader. That will work. A shader is just a script that makes the image look even better or to give it unique properties. In the top menu, click Help, select General and Shader Keywords, and you will get a list. However, these are just general keywords and commands for many different games. Enemy Territory has some uh, special commands. For example, in Enemy Territory, the engineer can plant landmines on certain textures, as you know. For that to work, the texture must have a shader with a special landmine command. This is a perfect example of why you need to look at the original enemy territory files occasionally. For example, the shader files. Go into the unzipped pack zero folder and the scripts folder. Open the shader for enemy territory's classic map radar. Let's continue with the folders. Inside Sound, create two folders, Maps and Scripts. Inside Textures, create one folder, Dynamite Allied Tower. Inside this folder, create and save a 512 by 512 pixel image with the words Allied Tower. Give it the name Tower Sign. So far, so good, but there's one problem. The level editor doesn't yet know anything about your shader file. Remember, the level editor only looks inside the ET main folder when it starts. Therefore, we need to do two things. First, we need to put a copy of our shader file there. Secondly, we also need to find a way to tell the level editor the name of our shader file. Start by copying your shader file, dynamite allied tower underscore version one dot shader. Then go inside the enemy territory folder, open the ET main folder, go inside the script folder and paste your shader file here, dynamite allied tower underscore version one dot shader. Next, find a text file entitled shaderlist.txt and open it. Put the name of your shader file at the end of the list without the file extension. Dynamite Allied Tower underscore version 1. Save and close this text file. One more thing. Go back to your map. Open the folder Textures and copy the folder Dynamite Allied Tower. Then go back to the game folder and ET Main. Inside ET Main, create a folder with the name Textures. Paste the folder Dynamite Allied Tower here. And in it, the tower sign JPEG that you just created. It took some time and it might also seem strange why do we need to store the shader file and our custom textures in two locations? 
it's because the level editor scans the etmain folder when it starts. Now it will find both your shader and your texture. Everything's fine. Let's start NetRadiant Custom. Take a look at the window with all the textures. We can double click on Dynamite Allied Tower to view the content. We can even create an object in the world and give it this texture. Press the letter S on your keyboard and click on the Fit button. Sweet! Now delete it. Double click on Common and select the texture Caulk. The window on the left is called the 2D window. Click and drag to create an object. You can change the perspective by pressing Ctrl and Tab. On the right we have the 3D window. If you right click anywhere in it, you can use the keys on your keyboard to fly around. Press Escape to deselect objects. In the help menu, you can select general and then mouse shortcuts for a list of shortcuts. For example, hold down the shift key while clicking once on an object to select it. In the 2D window, click outside a selected object and drag to change its shape. Now we need to enter some general settings for our map. Just select, then press N on your keyboard. This brings up the world spawn window. In the field for key, write map chords max. In the field for value, write 1000 space and minus 1000 and then press enter. Continue and enter these keywords and values. Close this world spawn window. Select an object in your map. I just want to show you that you can always copy and paste just like in any other software. Just use Ctrl C and Ctrl V. Please be aware that the level editor automatically pastes it on the exact location. So you need to drag it to a new position. You can also undo with Ctrl C. Create your first room. Save it in your custom map folder. Inside the map folder with the name dynamite allied tower underscore version one. To select just one surface, press Ctrl and Shift simultaneously, then click once. In the window with textures, double click Gold Rush. A texture that has its own shader will always have white dashes around it. In this example, it's Sandy Grass B. To view that specific shader, hold Shift and click on it. We can confirm that it has this uh, landmine command. We can also see that it has grass steps enabled, influencing the sound when walking and running. Apply the texture by clicking once. Deselect it with Escape. Select the four walls by pressing Shift and clicking once on each wall. In the 2D window, use Ctrl plus Tab to get a side view. 
I use my mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. I right click and drag to move around in the 2D window. Now we're going to cut all four walls horizontally. Hold Ctrl while clicking once on a line in the 2D window. Please do it again on the same horizontal level, but a bit to the side of the first click. Now you have two points in space. Press the Shift key and, while holding it down, press the Enter key to execute the cut. Press Escape to deselect everything. You can select multiple surfaces by holding down Ctrl and Shift and clicking on them. In the Texture window, go to XLab and double click on XLab Wall. Then use the Escape button to deselect. Select the remaining surfaces. Double click on Skies. A bit of warning here, not all skies will work. You need to test different skies until you get what you want. I'm selecting sky underscore gold rush. I guess it's the one they used in the gold rush map. Save the map. Inside your custom map folder, take a look inside the map folder. The map file with the extension .map is used only by the level editor. The game engine never uses it. Now go back to the editor. In the 2D window, right click and select Info. Then Info Player Deathmatch. Press the Escape key to deselect this entity. Right click again and select Script Multiplayer. When the script multiplayer entity is still selected, press N to bring up the entities window. Enter the key script name and the value game underscore manager. Press enter and close this window. Deselect the entity. Go to the allied base, right click and select Team Wolf objective. Press N to bring up the Entities window. Make it uh, Default Allies. Enter Description and Allied Base, as well as Script Name and Allies underscore Spawn. Close the Entities window. Now copy this Jello Team Wolf objective and put the copy in the Axis Base. Press N. Change the information to default axis and description to axis base and the script name to axis underscore spawn. Close the window and deselect the entity. Go back to the allied base, right click and select team CTF blue spawn. Press N. Select Invulnerable and start active. Give the entity a script name, for example, spawn point underscore allies. Also, enter the key angle and the value 90. This is the angle or direction the player will face when spawning into the game. Close the window, go to the axis base. Right click in the 2D window and select Team CTF Red Spawn. Open the Entities window, select Invulnerable and start active. Script name, spawn point underscore axis. Angle, value 270. Now it's time to build the Allied Tower. Let's make it simple. Start by making a cube. Hold CTRL and SHIFT while clicking on the sides. 
In the Textures window, double-click on Dynamite Allied Tower. Click on the Tower Sign Texture. Press S on your keyboard to bring up the Surface Inspector. Click Fit. Select the rest of the visible surfaces and apply another texture. I randomly picked a metal texture. Next, we're going to turn this into a dynamitable objective. First, we need to select all the parts of the tower, and we do that by holding the Shift key and clicking on them. Right-click in the 2D window and select Funk Explosive. Press N to open the Entities window. Script name, Funk Explosive Tower. Target name, Funk Explosive Tower. DMG 100. Next, we need a trigger zone. Create a box that covers the area where the axis should plant the dynamite. Go to the common textures and apply the trigger texture. Right click in the 2D window and select trigger objective info. Select allied objective and is objective. Then enter these keywords and values. Click on Build in the top menu and drag down to Final blah 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 Bounce 8. This will create the so-called BSP file, which is used by the game engine. Close the editor, go back into your custom map folder. Dynamite Allied Tower underscore version 1.bsp is the file we need to distribute to server administrators and our friends for them to open and play our map. However, we also need to give them the rest of the assets that we created. So select the folders, level shots, maps, models, scripts, sounds and textures. Zip them. Change the extension from .zip to .pk3. Copy this .pk3 and put it into ET main. Start the game, open the console and type devmap dynamite ally tower underscore version 1 and press enter on your keyboard. The ground definitely has grass steps. And I can plant landmines.
I'm also going to add a roof. Don't let the entities get stuck inside objects. Next, I'll right click and select light. I enter a random light value, let's say 200. I put it in a corner under the roof. Then I copy it and drag it to the other corner. I press N and change the light value to something lower, 50, just for testing purposes. In the middle, under the roof, I want to put a light emitting texture. First, I select any entities or whatever that are in the way. If you select stuff and press H, you can hide them. I'll just create a small box here. I will also turn it into a so-called detailed part of the map. By default, everything you create is structural and it blocks the game engine's vision. This is normal and something good. However, most things inside the map, such as lamps, stairs, boxes, or whatever you created, that don't need to block the engine's vision should be turned into detailed parts. Select it, go to the top menu and select brush. Drag down to make detailed. Now I want to cut it or clip it. In fact, the clipper tool is one of the best tools in the level editor. I select it. Then in the 2D window, I make sure that I have a side view. I hold the control button and then I click two times in the 2D window to create a slice. That long red line indicates which part will be cut away. I can toggle the parts by holding down control and pressing enter. When I'm satisfied that the right part will be cut away, I just press enter and it's gone. I press control and shift and click to select a surface. I double click on the lights textures. I need to select a texture with a shader, otherwise it will not function as a light source. To rotate a texture, just press the rotate arrow. To bring back the hidden objects, press Shift and H. Click on Build in the top menu and drag down to Final Bounce 8. If you have a very long warm-up time, open the console and type G underscore warm-up 10 and press enter. Press L to bring up the limbo menu. See this gray background behind the flags? It's that gray 1024 pixel JPEG that we put inside the level shots folder. These two flags are the yellow Team Wolf objective entities. I'll go Axis, Engineer. It seems to me that a light value of only 50 is too weak. Let's switch to Allies for a second. I just want to test one thing. Yes, this is correct. It's impossible for the Allied forces to dynamite this tower.
So I switch back to the axis. I plant the dynamite. Dynamite planted.
Okay, now we know that the map works and you know how to download and install NetRadian Custom to create your own maps for the game Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. Write a comment under the video, subscribe or click thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Now go and create some great maps.